All right. Good afternoon, Chaz. Uh, very good to see you. NFL veteran and Super Bowl champ, now an entrepreneur and a self-proclaimed men's health expert, which I like, I respect. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's great to be chatting with you today. And we're, we're going to cover a lot of fascinating things about vitality, uh, about hormones, about sperm, kind of, I think, jointly our, our favorite topics um, you know, Chaz would be would be great if you can share a little bit more about about uh, who you are and what you do. Yeah, I'm always careful to to throw that self proclaimed in there. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely not not an expert, but 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 enough know enough to be dangerous. I, yeah. I've kind of, kind of dedicated my well coming up playing sports and then going into professional sports. Kind of you know er- everything was about human performance, right? Optimizing performance, health, wellness. Um, kind of trying to trying to find that edge, right, and get get the most out of your body. Um, and then after I got done playing ball, I pretty quickly realized that that didn't really exist. Hmm. More more like sick care. Um, hmm. And then when you started looking for those patient types of interventions, it, you know. Hmm a lot of stuff that you got to wade through, right? A lot of, a lot of, I mean, there's, there's a lot of crap and bunk out there, right? A lot of bunk. Yeah. How do you, how do you even make sense of it all? Cause I think if you're looking up, you know, uh, uh, hormone testing, it's just even figuring out what you should be testing, how you should be tracking, what format to get the tests done. I mean, it's, it's kind of a nightmare. It, it really is. And, and, you know, it's, it's hard and the process to do to do the right thing right it always goes through diagnostics yeah. and it's just always been really tough and just kind of a you know pun intended painful process right yeah. you know yeah. and and even then right like what which you know who are you trusting who are the experts right and you you know you're going to your primary care doc you know it's a very nuanced topic it's just you know there's a lot there so so Anyway, um, you know, just kind of looking out and seeing that and, and, you know, and, and coming from a model where everything was kind of centralized around a team and yeah. all of the experts were vetted and you kind of had this team that, that, that was there to kind of support you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I kind of envisioned a model that we could create that was similar, right. Where we could, you know, give men support and give them the right information and then yeah. create, you know, diagnostics backed programs as opposed to so, just that's awesome. products and services to- totally agree and and, and Chaz, i want to i want to talk a little bit about your testicles uh, <laughs> <laughs> I you that a dollar for every time i heard that <laughs> <laughs> you'd have one dollar <laughs> <laughs> um so you know you you were you were playing a you know high impact relatively dangerous sport um, did anyone ever talk to you about, you know, potential injury to your testicles, to its potential impact on your fertility, on its potential impact on your ability to have a kid, to have kids or build a family in the future? Not that I could think of. No. I mean, I remember, I remember being young and, and then making us wear a cup, you know, when we played, um, yep. but that was about it. And I don't know that, that it was ever really explained why other than just that it would hurt if you got hit there. <laughs> um but yeah no and i actually because i i wanted to know this also what currently you know what's going on and if it's being talked about or anything like that and i actually just this morning called a buddy of mine who just retired a year ago um and just asked him like hey i know nobody really talked about you know obviously not you know the the injuries and testicles but i was talking about just like fertility or any of those kind of topics but you know has 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 that changed at all? And he said, no, you know, there's no, there's no conversations about it that are happening. Do you you think, cause we, we talk a lot about this at legacy because we work with, for example, elite military operators, right? So we work with the Navy SEALs. We work with the green berets. We work with a lot of men who are in what we call dangerous jobs. And frankly, I would categorize a professional sports player as being in a similar category where there's real risk of physical damage to you or your ability to have children. I mean, do you have any thoughts on what the NFL could be doing to be proactive in addressing family building for its players? Absolutely. I think, I think going in, uh, being able to establish a baseline for mm-hmm. your fertility and for your hormones is, yeah. would be super important because I think there's a couple of things at play, right? Like one is that everybody's different as you know. And so there's these big ranges of what's quote unquote normal, mm-hmm. but then on top of that, what nobody's, 
nobody's talking about is the fact that if you are an elite athlete or elite performer or, you know, a veteran or, you know, someone that's in one of these elite special forces, you're probably not in the average, right? right. So like, so those ranges won't, won't, wouldn't apply to you anyway. Right. right? I mean, so, your, your metabolic numbers are going to be off the charts, right? Compared to like average exactly. Joe sitting on his couch. BMI, watching TV. BMI, metabolic function, all that stuff. Yeah. So, so why would you be comparing yourself against that range? Right. So you should be parent comparing yourself against yourself. Yeah. Um, and there's no way to do that without, you know, without diagnostics. Super, super interesting and, and, and makes sense around how men should be thinking about their hormones as well. It's you want to have a baseline for yourself. I mean, same for fertility and you want to understand how those are, how those are changing. And when you're an elite athlete, you are just, you're, you're in a different stratosphere than, than most other individuals. Um, so we actually ran a study recently where we were comparing sperm quality across the entire United States because we now have, um, we now handle more, this is a strange claim to fame, but we handle more sperm than anyone in the country on a daily basis. Uh, and so we were able to look at, you know, thousands and thousands of men and how they compared. Um, we found that men in the Northeast have a higher median sperm concentration and total sperm count than other regions. Do you think this might have given the Eagles uh, an advantage? <laughs> <laughs> Got to, right? I mean, what, what is that? What, what, do you, what is that? Uh, why? Hmm. So there, there's there's a few theories behind it. One of which um, is just access to high quality healthcare systems. There's good uh, good healthcare in the Northeast. Some people have asked, you know, about what is it in the water. Um, some have suggested that you know it could actually be pollution or heat. Um, mm -hmm. So heat is negatively associated with sperm count. Um, and so yeah. you know there, there's a there's a wide ranging uh, num number of theories around this, but nobody knows for certain. All we know is if you're in the Northeast, your sperm quality is looking a little better than uh, the rest of the country. Yeah, and I mean the, the Patriots won all those championships, so there you go, right? I mean maybe maybe sperm is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is. Yeah, I, I'd be really curious yeah. to 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 see if that is also related to hormone function. I'd imagine I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. So, so we know we know that uh, sperm quality and your overall health are actually very closely correlated. Sperm is a biomarker, uh, not just for your health as a whole, but it can even it predicts rates of cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease. I mean, a whole array of potential issues. Um, it, even there was a study showing that men who are kind of below normal ranges for their sperm were twice as likely to die in a given seven or eight year period. Um, so in some ways, you know, your sperm quality, because it's reflective of your overall health, helps predict your longevity as well. So wouldn't, I mean, there, there absolutely should be a correlation between higher sperm quality and higher overall health. Um, but certainly, I mean, you know, do you feel the demands and the stress that are placed on players? I mean, how do you think they affect their, their hormones? And I suppose, uh, by extension, their their fertility. I mean, have you seen this firsthand? Uh, you know, you mentioned a little bit about the military. I mean, have you seen similar symptoms in military members? Maybe those that you service through Vitality. Absolutely, yeah. No, I I think that's where we see it the most, right? I think there's a lot going on there psychologically, um, but you know, we already kind of mentioned, um, but you know, just around, around a purpose and a mission and the camaraderie and, you know, that kind of environment. And then, uh, you know, but, I, but I think also the physiological uh, ramifications, I mean, I think the inflammation and the TBI is just a big thing and people, there's a lot of misnomers around TBI and people think that that just means like, you know, severe concussions, but mm -hmm. there's a huge spectrum mm -hmm. Of TBI that that includes. TBI being traumatic brain injuries, traumatic brain injury. Yeah, exactly. And you know, the, the, the hypopituitary axis is in the back of your head, right? Like that's a very fragile mechanism, the hypothalamus and the pituitary, and those are getting rattled around. Right. And, and those, those are what regulates your hormone production. Yeah. Cause uh, there, there's a connection between concussions and low testosterone or even erectile dysfunction, right? Um, yeah. how, how would you advise someone to be thinking about that? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, I think first and foremost, getting a baseline, right. So that you have something to measure it against like yeah. anything else. Um, but, you know, I think making sure you're paying attention to inflammation, 
right? Like there's a couple of really important supplements that can address things like that, you know, like fish oil and, you know, curcumin and things like that, that address inflammation. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you, th- that's what, what's happening is that axis is being disrupted and it's causing all kinds of other, I mean, the, those hormones are what regulate all of your function, right? Like all of your biological functions from mental health all the way to physical health. And so if that's disrupted and those things are showing up, I mean, the problem is like people are treating those symptoms that are popping up with band-aids, hmm. right? And you got to go to the, my, what I would recommend is going to the root of that problem, regulate, you know, regulating the hormones. And, and by the way, regulating hormones doesn't necessarily mean, you know, replacing them. Right. right? Like, it's not necessarily so- that you're doing hormone replacement therapy or anything like that. Exactly. I mean, there's diet and lifestyle, you know, modifications, lifestyle, including exercise and stress regulation and sleep. Mm-hmm. Sleep's a really, really big one. That's so sleep, sleep, sleep well and hydrate. I hear that's what most people say. Well and hydrate, that's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. That's the mantra. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah um, and, and just on the hydrate, I appreciate that you have the, the world's largest glass of water that I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> maybe at Oktoberfest. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but this man clearly hydrates and I, I'm with you. I'm with you on sleep. And, you know, you, you touched on testosterone and, and this is interesting to me because I've heard that a lot of athletes experience low T, um, even in college. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that in your experience. I mean, mm-hmm. how, which, how should we be thinking about this? How do you educate people about this? And, and why, uh, why does this happen? Because I, I would imagine I think of an athlete as being high testosterone, right? Like a manly kind of man. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, you know, I mentioned it earlier, but that, that they they call it the high allostatic load, right? Like your body is constantly dumping stress hormones, which, you know, I think cortisol and norepinephrine, that's, you know, those blunt uh, testosterone production, you know, testosterone just being one of the hormones, right? Like there's, uh, you know, a handful of others, luteinizing hormone, you know, I think another big one is, is estradiol, right? And estrogen and all the, I mean, you know, we haven't even talked about food, right? And so it's like, as athletes, as athletes, are you fueling your body with the right foods? I mean, there's just so much crap out there. And And it's really hard as a young athlete, right? Like, uh, without without a lot of money to eat the right foods. Right. You know, that's affecting hormones and fertility and stuff like that. But but to get back to your to your question, I mean, I think as as an athlete, what's causing that are the extreme demands and stress um, you know, the kind of harsh environment that you're purposely putting yourself in. And then the, 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 the inflammation that's caused by a traumatic brain injury and just repetitively punishing your body. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting testosterone. And, and first of all, you actually, you mentioned estrogen, which a lot of us think about as a more kind of female or feminine hormone, but the reality is both men and women, um, do have, you know, should have natural levels of testosterone and estrogen. You need both to function effectively. Um, 100%. And you want that to be in an optimal range. You don't want it to be too low or exactly. too high. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I'm curious to hear, what do you think about the link between fertility and hormones? Um, do you have a take on this? And how, how, are, the two, uh, how are the two related? Because I think it comes back to a lot of the pillars of health and wellness you were starting to talk about before. Yeah, I think I think it's, you know, I think it's becoming a bigger and bigger problem for the exact same reasons. Hmm. I think he's, you know, quote unquote endocrine disruptors that range from, you know, environmental to lifestyle, um, you know, I think are just, are just huge factors and the, you know, overall health and wellness. Right. And like you said, with, with, uh, with sperm being a good indicator of overall health, um, you know, it's, it's, everything is, everything is interrelated. And I think, you know, as, entrepreneurs and as companies and brands that, you know, we're trying to kind of evangelize our message, right? Like we tend to get very one tracked about kind of our intervention or, you know, our, our message, but the, the real fact of the matter is that all of this stuff really matters, right? It's all interrelated and it really does need to be looked at um, integratively. Um, I'll, I'll share, I'll share a couple of interesting tidbits on that. The first is, um, on testosterone replacement therapy, which has become increasingly common nowadays, you know, also known as TRT, 
uh, where you're basically injecting testosterone or, you know, you're getting a patch to get testosterone into your body. Uh, what most men don't know, and we ran a study showing that about two thirds of men weren't aware that this happens, um, sperm production in your body basically stops altogether when you are bringing in um, artificial testosterone uh, and putting it into your bloodstream. And so men who are taking TRT feel great, right, because of the increase in testosterone, but actually are effectively infertile um, during the period in which they're taking TRT. And there have been a lot of other interesting links. Um, so there's a fairly common fertility drug uh, known as Clomid. Uh, mm -hmm. And so there was um, Robert Mathis, he's in the Indianapolis Colts. Um, he actually ended up getting a four game suspension because he tested positive for Clomid. Um, so it's on the it's on the NFL's banned substance policy because it has potential performance enhancing characteristics. But actually, Clomid is often used for fertility because it helps increase sperm count, um, and in theory, can help increase your chances of pregnancy. Uh, and so, one of those where very clear link between your fertility, between your hormones, uh, and in this case, unfortunately, you know, he had a four game suspension, but I think he had his uh, I think he had his fourth child. So I guess it I guess it kind of worked out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, there's a, there's a lot of things to unpack there, I think around, you know, when uh, first to kind of go back to testosterone replacement therapy, I think the first thing to note is that that should never be the first option, right? Um, right. You know, there's, there's plenty of other things we already talked about diet and lifestyle things. And then you mentioned Clomid, which I can get into a little bit more in depth. But there's also a, a, a responsible way to do testosterone replacement therapy that involves kind of cycling on and off exogenous testosterone. So you don't, I mean, you can shut down your body's natural testosterone production mm -hmm. the same way you shut down right. your fertility effectively. Right. It's the same exact mechanism, mm -hmm. right? And so you always want to kind of be going back and forth and on and off that and you never want to you know, unless you don't have the a goal of, you know, starting a family or, ha or having any more kids, obviously. Right. Um, but that's, that's definitely something that's, that that's overlooked um, mm -hmm. when, when talking about that, mm -hmm. but then getting into Clomid, I mean, that's kind of, that's something that we use a lot actually. And, you know, it, it um, inadvertently is boosting sperm production because it's boosting LH and FSH, right. you know, right. same, same exact mechanism. And again, mm. these things are, are, are interrelated. Mm. Um, but you know, all of these things are, are great kind of tools. And again, I mean, everything is, you know, nothing, nothing is a silver bullet, you know, and right. people tend to think when they hear hormone therapy, that means people want that people want therapy. that silver bullet, uh, the quick fix. No, right. just give me the testosterone. And that's just, you know, nothing's, nothing's ever that easy. Yeah. Look, it's just like being a professional athlete or building a business. It's, you got to, you got to show up every day. It's not like you can just, there's no one magic pill that you can take that can solve everything. And there's no real replacement for sleeping well, eating well, having a massive jug of water next to you at all times and so on. Well, well, so what, what if someone wants, so I've heard that watching sports, watching sports, not even playing sports can affect your testosterone levels. Is that true? I think I've heard that too. Actually, I think I've I've seen a couple of things. There was some study at a like University of Utah or something like that about that. I don't know how how um, how amazingly well designed that study was, but <laughs> sure. but but it, but it makes sense, right? It makes sense. I mean, you know, your your hormones are essentially chemicals that your brain are releasing to govern function, and so you're getting excited. I think that study actually took it one further, and it said that there was a boost like a 20% boost when you're, t when the team that you were rooting for won versus, okay. <laughs> versus, the, versus the loss. Cause, cause win, win, winning, winning increases your testosterone levels, I guess. Winning increases your testosterone levels, apparently. Yeah. I mean, short term, obviously. Sure. Um, sure. But yeah, it just, it kind of, it speaks to that psychological component and that link and why everything, everything is connected. And that's why we talk about like, you know, transitioning from, you know, athletes to, being retired or veterans to yeah. civilian life, right? Like that psychological component of not having that, that goal and that win, yeah. you know, that's, that's impactful. And, and that's just, you know, that's just that, right? Like, but you talk about like, maybe, you know, just an entrepreneur or a business person or, you know, anything, right? Like, you know, you can create small wins in your life to generate those kinds of reactions in your body and yeah. and they're more impactful than you than you might think yeah to totally agree um so tell me tell me Chaz, 
how how do you see the big vision for Vitality RX? Where where do you see the company going in the next five years? You've already built obviously a very compelling starting product already, but you know you're 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 a guy with bigger ambitions. So where where do things go? Yeah, I think I mean I'd like to follow the roadmap uh, the created by Legacy. I mean, right? Like, <laughs> Great, that was a perfect answer. Yeah, right? <laughs> I love it. All right, we're done here. We're wrapping you up. Tell me, right? <laughs> 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 no, I, I think, you know, I think, unfortunately, mm -hmm. this is just a pervasive problem, right? Yeah. Just like fertility right. almost is a pervasive problem. And only and getting worse. It's only getting worse. And we just want to make it a little bit easier and more accessible to be able to address it, right? And then obviously, at the same time, just kind of evangelize around these types of topics and normalize it a little bit, remove some of the taboos, give people more high quality kind of science backed information. I mean, that's, that's my goal. I, I just, I just think that there's so much wrong with the system, you know, the, the, me the medical, you know, quote unquote, traditional healthcare system is just, you know, everybody knows it's broken. So I'd like, to, uh, I'd like us to be a part of the solution instead of, instead of the problem. Yeah. I, I love that. And, and do you have any piece of advice for anyone who's listening and thinking about how they want to take care of their hormones and their health? I think my mantra and something that's been coming up that I mentioned in every conversation I'm having these days is what gets measured gets managed. Right. right? And that's right. true all the way across the board. And that's, you know, obviously why it's so important for, you know, for you to have your, you know, get your sperm uh, tested and, right. and, and then potentially preserved yeah. and no, and know, know your baseline, right? And know your baseline. Exactly. Then you have something to compare it to everything. This is a highly kind of individualized and personalized thing, right? Just like we said, there's no silver bullet. There's also no one size fits all solution. And so without being able to measure the size of the problem, you know, that's, that's, that's the, that's where you start. But then also, you know, if, if you're trying all of these different things, that's great, right? Like we already said, this is an integrative problem that requires an integrative solution. So, but, but if you're not measuring the impact of those things, how do you really know, you know, what to double down on or what to totally stick agree. to? Whatever, right. And that can also provide a good kind of psychological bump, you know, when you can see the the hard evidence that this is influencing these, right. these numbers, these biomarkers. Yeah, completely, completely agree. And uh, I guess last question for you, Chaz, which is uh, who's going to win the Super Bowl on Sunday? That's tough. I don't really have a dog in the fight. I, I would say I grew up in DC, and so I grew right. up a, a, a Red, uh, not Redskins, a Commanders fan. Sure. Uh, so sure. I was kind of raised to hate the Eagles. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, so you know what? I'd, we're 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 gonna predict just based on sperm counts. We're we're gonna see if based on sperm counts, we gotta go with the Eagles. But, but you're gonna go with the Eagles because their sperm counts higher, and I know you love that. So I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll, we'll 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 check back in on Monday. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. If if I win, uh, if I win, I get a sperm test kit. If you win, you get a hormone deal. test kit. Do you have <laughs> you have a deal? <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, Chaz, great to chat, and and always happy to talk about uh, sperm, hormones, health, fertility, um, all so integrated so tightly with one another, and uh, lots more work to be done. So thank you for being part of the part of the solution. Um, Absolutely. Likewise, you too. Yeah.